Hi guys, welcome back to Learning Electronics Repair and part three of all you need to know about capacitor markings to fix stuff. So if you watch part two, and why not? Because there was a lot of useful information in there, same as part one. Then you will know we ended with a little bit of a challenge. So we have this capacitor, I measured this. It measures about 640 picofarads. It does read like a capacitor, it reads open circuit in ohms range and the question was what is it well it isn't actually a capacitor it's a ceramic resonator it's made sort of like a capacitor in its construction so that's why it did read with some capacitance but basically this is an alternative to a crystal as used in crystal oscillators this is a 455 kilohertz ceramic resonator the reason I didn't particularly spot that originally is because ceramic resonators, at least the ones I've seen, have three pins on them. So I'll show you a few more. So these are ceramic resonators. They're like capacitors with three legs. So if you see three-legged capacitors like this, they are almost certainly ceramic resonators. I say almost certainly because I have actually seen double capacitors in packages before now. So you can see they're marked with the frequency 3.58, this is megahertz, 10.7, 400k and so on. So if you see these things, they are ceramic resonators and they are basically the same as a crystal or crystal oscillator. Another interesting topic from part two, was mentioned in the comments i actually spotted this when i looked at these high voltage capacitors but didn't really mention it but i was thinking about it a bit later and true to course somebody else thought about it so we covered x and y capacitors in part two what they mean and what the difference is and the difference is that an x capacitor which is a filter capacitor is designed to go short circuit when it fails and a Y capacitor is designed to go open circuit when it fails for safety reasons watch part two that information is all over the net as they say uh, and then I found this capacitor so this has markings 400 volts x1 and 400 volts y1 somebody raised the topic Chris I think it was how can the capacitor fail both short and or open depending where you fit it and the answer is i don't know so does this capacitor prove that the statement that x capacitors fail short and y capacitors fail open is incorrect or does it show that this capacitor is kind of like not sure what it is or the markings are not really honest or does it just fail open in both cases i guess that would be the least dangerous situation if it fails comments one other thing we'll just talk about before we go on to smd capacitors which is the topic of today's video another point that came up in the comments on part two this topic was raised by a viewer or subscriber tom look or tom lucky whichever you want to pronounce his name on there and he mentioned foil capacitors which have a black band on one end these are not polarized capacitors i don't have any of these to show you these are vintage capacitors these examples are used in guitar amplifiers vintage valve or vacuum tube guitar amps and you can see these have a band on one end some other examples here and i think you can see here it says outside foil so what this band actually represents is the outer foil on the capacitor why is that important well these capacitors consist of two pieces of aluminium foil or metal foil and a dielectric the insulator between the two pieces of foil which is a plastic film on these some used waxed paper they're called waxies as the little if you like term for these old capacitors waxes but what we have is we have a coil of aluminium or some other metal i can hardly draw it properly okay and then we have another coil okay wound up and in between 
is an insulating sheet in between the two pieces of metal foil. And these are rolled up. Yeah, you sort of roll it, this one, you roll it up, okay. And of course, when you've rolled it, one piece of metal foil will be on the outside, the outside layer. Now, it matters how you connect these capacitors and these sort of amplifiers because there's a lot of gain, it's amplification, it's an amplifier after all, so it's a high gain. And the metal foil on the outside of the capacitor will act like an antenna, so it picks up interference. So you'll want to connect that end to the ground side of your circuit. So for this reason, we have these capacitors I've just shown you where they have the black band on one end and this represents the outer foil. One other thing I want to mention from the previous video is this EIA voltage code list. So firstly, this is not a complete list. And secondly, I actually made an error in the list. So the code J, if it's a lowercase J, as for example, this is a lowercase E, it refers to 6.3 volts. There's some sense in this because lowercase E is 2.5 volts, uppercase is 25 volt, lowercase J is 6.3 volt, and uppercase J is 63 volt. So just be aware of this. We'll look at the full list a little bit later on in this video because this comes into play with the surface mount electrolytic capacitors we're gonna look at and tantalum capacitors. Something else that didn't get mentioned in the comments on part two, but I need to mention it really. So this is another way of marking the polarity on tantalum capacitors. You'll find, again, these are vintage capacitors. The silvery, like a, kind of like a metal foil covered in plastic, but they are tantalum, they're silvered in color. And they'll have the leads, and one end of the lead will have like a little pointed nipple on it with a wire coming out. And if you see this, that is the positive end. Okay, and you may actually see surface mount tantalum capacitors that have like a little pointy bit on two corners of the actual end cap. So this is the end cap of the capacitor. And on one end, it has like these little pyramid shaped things. Okay, that is also the positive end. I think that's all we need to add to the previous video. So let's get on with this one. So this is specifically about surface mount capacitor markings, but I'll also mention the polymer and the dry electrolytic or solid electrolytic type capacitors as well, because we normally find them on the same boards as we find SMD components. Here we have some solid electrolytic capacitors. You'll see some markings. So the First marking, LF, this is the series of capacitor. If you look that up, you may find data sheets that give you various parameters about these capacitors, but you don't really need that to find the value. So we have this one, 560. These are always marked in microfarads, not picofarads. So 560 microfarads. The small letter J, as I was just explaining, that's the 6.3 volt. Again, LF270 microfarad, this has a large letter C, large letter C being 16 volt. The other number is either a batch number or a date code. I have another one, so F is the manufacturer's logo, 712 is the series of capacitors. This is marked in the other nomenclature, so this is still microfarads, but this is 82 and 10. Okay, so this is 820 microfarad. This is actually marked with the voltage. The colored stripes on these are the negative end. And we have another one. So this one again, the F logo is the manufacturer. I don't actually know who that is. You guys probably do, at least some of you. 813 is the series again. 270 microfarad. 16 volts and these are typical of the markings you will find on these type of polymer or solid electrolytic capacitors 
Now let's look at some surface mount ones. With some surface mount electrolytic capacitors, it's fairly easy to read the value because it's actually marked on the capacitor in the form you would expect with the actual capacitance and microfarads and the voltage in volts. So as an example, we have some here. This is 220 microfarads, 25 volts. Similar to the ones we were looking with the leads on, 220 microfarads, 25 volts. Another one here, 100 microfarads, 25 volts. So these will tell you basically the value. Another one, 47, 25 volts. So a lot of the capacitors are easy enough to read like that. Here's another one. So EAW will be the series, the type of capacitor. 13 is probably a batch or a date code. The funny little C type logo is the manufacturer, 560 microfarad, 2.5 volts. So those types of capacitors are not so difficult. But you will find some capacitors that are marked, for example, like this one. So S with an underscore 3, 100 V, 100 volts, UD. Okay, so it looks like we have a 100 volt capacitor here, but with no capacitance marked on, maybe the S3 will tell us and UD. So how do we decipher these types of codes? Well, the answer to that is we need to look up the series, which is the type of capacitor. So what the series means is that you have a range of values with a different type. So the series will specify, for example, the temperature, 105 degrees, 85 degrees. It'll specify the ESR of the capacitor and a number of other parameters, temperature coefficients and all sorts of things that you probably don't want to know, but you can find out. Here is a typical data sheet for a capacitor series. So this is TS13, that's the series. These are actually electrolytic, aluminium electrolytic capacitors, not surface mount, but the principles are the same. And it will show us the various values available in this series of capacitors and give us lots of information like the dimensions, the actual voltage ratings. So we can see that certain values are only available in certain voltage ratings, and these are the size for these ones. And the data sheet may give us other information as well. Now let's look at our strangely marked capacitor again. So here we see it's 100 volt UD. What is it? Well, to find out, the first thing is to find the series. So we need to look up this UD series. How do we do it? Well, of course, Google is our friend. So we can go and search for UD capacitor series data sheet. Okay. UD series data sheet by Nichicon, that will be the manufacturer. Let's have a look. And here's our data sheet, okay? So it gives us local information, 105 degrees I mentioned, various capacitance tolerance and values from 1 to 1500, 6.3 to 50 volts. We have everything we need here. And we have some codes, look, that looks like our code, yeah? And it's telling us what this code actually means. So the number at the top is the lot number, the digits is the capacitance, and the letter is a voltage. So this is not a 100 volt capacitor in UD series at all. It's a 100 microfarad, and the letter V is 35 volts. So we have here a 100 microfarad, 35 volt electrolytic capacitor. And suddenly, our capacitor markings are not as mysterious at all. In fact, I have some more in this range, so we can read them now. So this is 100E. The UD is rubbed off, but we can see it. We can look up the letter E to find out the voltage, which is 25 volts, and so on. Another one. 470 small letter J 6.3 volts. Yeah, same. 
same. Do you have anything different to you? Rubbed off a bit, but 100E again, UD. So that's how to actually find out what these capacitors actually are. There are a few common series, so we can have a look at some of the common ones. So we have uh, this one, put an example like E, E, 10, C, T, Z, okay? Black stripe at one side. On these ones, this is the TZ series. Okay, we can see there. C is the voltage using the same EIA system that we were using before. This is the value in microfarads. That's a TZ series. And we can just look at quickly at the data sheets in the moment. We have, um, yeah, like these ones. Um, 220 um, JFK and then um, there's usually a series number here OPD something like that so on these as I said series number on these FK is a series J we should recognize this now we know the lowercase was 6.3 so we know this is a 63 volt capacitor this is a batch or date code, and this is the value. Microfarad, so that's the FK series, TZ series. EDK is another one you'll find out. EDK series is a very common one, but the capacitors are marked in maybe a way you wouldn't expect. So if you see something like this, 220, uh, 50G, Okay, and a date code. These type, although they have this letter G and a few other single letters, this is EDK series, just mentioned that one. And if you look for EDK series, you will find it. But if you go and put something like capacitor markings this, it should direct you to that. So that's the EDK series. And as we've just seen, I'll draw the stripes on these where they belong some sort of batch code with an underlying number so we have 220 v how about that? 220 volts ud so we know this is 220 microfarads that v is 35 volts and this is ud series so knowing the series is the key to deciphering the markings on all of these capacitors as I did mention a few, uh, VK, we were looking at this is the one with the normal electrolytics, if you like. Um, FK, that's the one we just looked at. And look there with the markings, so it actually tells you what they are. Uh, Chemist, which is a manufacturer. This is the EDK series. You can see how they're marked. So if you remember that style of marking, you should also remember these are EDK series capacitors. Or we'll refer back to this video, of course. Okay. UD series we just looked at, so we've already seen that one. So that's how we decipher electrolytic capacitor surface mount ones. How about tantalum surface mount capacitors? Surface mount tantalum capacitors are almost always black or yellow in colour. We have some here, so with the tantalum capacitor, they are polarized like a normal electrolytic or polymer, but the positive end is marked, not the negative end. Sometimes it's just a bar, but you need to know that as the positive end. These have the value 470 microfarads, and that's a little bit different from the leaded tantalums. We'll say always marked in picofarads. These are marked in microfarads. And we have a small letter E, which we should already know because we've seen it several times now, is the letter code for 2.5 volts. So that's 470 microfarad 2.5 volts. Here we have some tantalum capacitors on a PCB, 470 microfarads, 34K2A. The bar at this end is the positive end, although it isn't marked with the plus sign. Tantalums always have the positive end marked 
I don't know this code 34K2A. I've tried to find that one. We know that 2A is a voltage rating on some capacitors, but I don't think that applies to these. To be quite honest, we find this on those film capacitors, which were 50 volt. I doubt very much that because these are on a V core for graphics cards. They're going to be a low voltage capacitor. Does anybody know what that marking is? You can let us all know, please. And another tantalum capacitor. I'm glad I've spotted this one, actually. So, A8, small g, and a q. Yeah, A8, that one. There might be another one here somewhere. Yep, 330E82. So this one we can decipher. We know 330 is the microfarad's positive end. Small letter E is 2.5 volts. So what's this one? Well, this is another marking code we find on tantalum capacitors. So let's take a look. Well, this is in fact another one of these EIA marking systems. We've seen the EIA capacitor voltage marking codes. Now we have the EIA capacitor value marking codes. Let's have a look. EIA capacitor marking code. Okay, that one. And here we have the SMD capacitor EIA marking code for values. Okay, so letter plus number indicates the value. So the letter, as we can see here, and some can be lowercase, some can be uppercase. So we have an uppercase A is 1.0. That value is in picofarads, okay? So one picofarad. The other number on ours is an eight. So eight is the number of zeros that follow. It's 10 to the power of eight eight zeros following it so it's one with eight zeros not too difficult to work out if it was one with six zeros that's one million picofarads or one microfarad if it was seven it would be ten microfarad so eight zeros is a hundred microfarad so our capacitor value is 100 microfarad the small letter g well that's a voltage rating which I will admit I can't find on the chart with this one. I see a large letter G, which is four volt. Considering this is on a graphics card and it's in a low voltage area, it probably is four volts. But if you weren't sure, you could just measure the voltage on that rail, power the card up, and that would give you an idea of what the minimum value of it should be. And that's another good way to work out voltage, by the way. If you can power the thing up, measure the voltage. With the yellow coloured tantalum surface mount capacitors, I don't have any at hand to show you actually, but I can give you some typical markings on these. So these will have again a band at one end to mark the positive end of it. Terminals. This is typical marking, something like 475E. Okay, so in this case, this is marked in picofarads. Four seven are the significant digits and five zeros. That's four seven zero 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 zero. Which if we put the comma in, make it easy, it's four point seven million or four point seven microfarads. E again is the voltage code, which is twenty five volts, the EIA voltage code. That's a fairly common marking on those sort of capacitors. They may simply be marked with the capacitance and voltage, so something like this, and probably actually marked this way, 33 microfarad, 16 volt, something like that, so the value actually marked on, okay? And you will sometimes find ceramic capacitors, if they are marked at all, and they usually aren't marked, so these are the brown multi-layer ceramic capacitors you find. Sometimes they will have a marking the same as that tantalum we're looking at. So something like a five would be one with five zeros after it, which is 
100,000 or 100 nanofarads. But the problem with ceramic capacitors is normally not marked at all. So these are the little, usually brown coloured square surface mount capacitors. These are MLCC, multi-layer ceramic capacitors. They often fail going short circuit. Mostly they are the brown colour I just showed you. There's another one there. And generally the black ones we see are resistors, but that isn't always the case. Now, I was always of the opinion that there's no real way to know the value of these capacitors. You could say physically larger ones are generally higher capacitance or higher voltage. Now, if you measure the capacitor, and these will come in different sizes, such as 0805 and 0402 and various different sizes, if you measure them, and you have to be careful, by the way, because there's both metric and imperial sizes and some sound the same but if you know the size that will generally give you the working voltage for capacitors in that range although again larger value capacitors in that range may have a lower working voltage if you know the voltage rail is a low voltage rail the chances are the big chunky ones are high value capacitors there is another way you can get a bit of information and that's from the color of the capacitor so I actually discovered that while making this video. I've seen them, never really give it much thought. But some of these are white or whitish in color. Some of them are this light brown. That's the color I've just shown you. These are the most common ones. And then some of them are dark brown. Yeah, some of them are dark brown or almost black uh, sometimes looking like resistors but you measure them and realize they're open circuit the capacitors or faulty resistors so we can actually work some information out from these the white ones generally are what are called class one capacitors and they will come with a certain series of capacitors so in class one cog and np Oh, or zero, yeah. These types of capacitors are low value capacitors. They'll be somewhere in the range from one picofarad to less than 100, yeah, less than 100 picofarads. So if you see white ones, they're in that range of value and these are the actual series. So if you look up the series, you may get some more information. Class two. These are the light brown ones, the ones you see the most commonly. These are series X7R, X5R. And these are normally rated from nanofarads, probably about 10 nanofarads, up into the microfarads. Largest ones, 22, 47, I'm not sure, maybe 100 microfarads. More commonly, probably 10 microfarads than the largest ones. But from the colour, you know the value is going to be somewhere in this range. And those are the series X7 or X5R. The dark brown to black ones, these are class 3. These are Y5V and Z5V series. Okay, these will be valued somewhere in the nanofarads region. You could get into the microfarads, but most likely they're in the nanofarads. So we can get that much information. The other possibility, well, depending on what the circuit is, and if you have lots of them on one voltage rail, the decouplers, the first thing probably you can just take one off and it doesn't matter. The second one, if you're a bit more really wanting to fix this OCD or a bit anal as they say then you can remove one of the ones close by on the same voltage rail and measure it and it'll almost certainly be the same one as the faulty shorted one most likely that you found so that is what we can find out about ceramic capacitors I'd like to add that while I was making these videos I actually learned quite a bit myself about this topic there was things I 
didn't know more than I realized, natural fact. So I used various information references to add to what I already knew. And one of the most in-depth ones I found was this website, this I equals cdvdt.com. So I'm going to link this into the video description and the pinned comment. This really does have more information. So take a look down here. A lot of this is additional stuff to what we covered. For example, different tolerance codes, more than the ones I pointed out. Different ways of making shorthand versions of codes. We looked at some of these already. Okay. These are the SMD capacitor values and the voltage codes. One I didn't mention. I've never seen this before, by the way. So we looked at the tantalum capacitor, the S3 or the A7, A8 and such like. There's apparently another version of this, which I've never seen. And the author on here says he's only ever found this information once as well. But there's a one digit plus color marking code for SMD capacitors. So they have the same letters basically as we see here. But instead of having a number, which represents the number of zeros, the marking is a particular color, orange, black, green, blue, violet, red. And depending on the color of the marking, that gives the multiplier. I've never heard of this before. Have you guys ever seen this? Have any of you ever come across that? Or is that something new to you as well? A little bit more about these codes. These are dielectric type codes, this XX coding system with various middle strikes, underscore, overscores that represent different dielectric types. Never seen that. These are the SMD tantalums merged in different ways. The same capacitor can be marked. They're all 10 microfarad. 25 volts, that's the system that we saw. You can have it apparently with a letter E, which I guess stands for the EIA in front of it. Okay. The size codes I was mentioning, some information here. Same with tantalum size codes. Here's some of the yellow ones I mentioned, a few more examples. So this kind of goes on quite a way, and this has a lot of links on here to various sites with capacity marking information. So if you do want to go further into this topic, I suggest you follow this link and just follow your nose from there. That's the end of part three then, and really the end of this deep dive into capacitor markings. Please guys, comments below. Any more information you can add to this will be most welcome by me and no doubt by other viewers as well. If any really significant information comes up, I'll be happy to make another follow on. But I think I've pretty much covered that one. What do you guys think? Well, I hope you enjoyed watching it anyway. And I look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.